Graham Potter. Watch your back. Watch your back in the shower. Watch your back in the kitchen. Watch your back on the football pitch. Because Chelsea are not going to let you get away with this. They have already spoken to Hansi Flick. It is obvious to see. Hansi Flick is sitting in the dugout next to a Chelsea executive. And for all of you that tell me, oh, he's got a five-year contract, he can't get sacked. Well, this is showing us that if he continues this way, he's going to get sacked. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang left out the squad. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang review, refused to be on the UEFA list. That's what Chelsea have decided. And three players were added on. I've got my complaints about there as well. We're going to talk about that. And finally, the biggest one of all, what the hell are we going to do about our result? Let's get into it. Welcome to the Kafka to you guys. And today's video, we've got two major topics. And uh, well, technically three, but two that is fine. We're going to be talking about Chelsea's current results. And more importantly, why Potter's job, in my opinion, is on the line now. Potter needs to start getting results. And it needs to start next week from West Ham. Because if it doesn't, I'm telling you now, the Germany manager, Hansi Flick, will be in charge. He was already at Stamford Bridge. I've got the details. We can break it down. We can talk about it. And we can get into the minute details from the eye test and the statistics. I've got both for you. And finally, Chelsea have made the hard decision of including three players in their Champions League squad, removing Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. The three that were made, I don't know whether it was the right decision or the wrong decision. We'll talk about that. And Badia Shield was left out. And I don't know how you guys feel about that. So let me know in the comments below. Hit the like button. We're aiming for a thousand likes. Let's get that happen. Let's become make that the normality on this channel. I want you to subscribe because if you made it this far, you're here to stay. And finally, in the pinned comment is my Instagram. Hit me up anytime with football related questions. I usually respond via voice note or I just message. And it's a great way to build a community and for you guys to understand when I'm going to be recording, when I'm not, so that you don't miss out on anything. But let's get on with the video. Last night wasn't good, bro. It was not good. And I promise you now, it is not going to get better anytime soon until we fix the imbalance in the midfield, in my opinion. I think we are absolutely limiting Enzo Fernandez. Even Enzo Fernandez couldn't solve that midfield out yesterday. By keeping him as a register of a sick with two players like Mason Mount and Conor Gallagher either side of him, you're limiting the productivity of this team. Hopefully, with the in introduction of Joao Felix next, we can have a little bit more pizzazz and when N'Golo Kante comes, we can have a little bit more security in that midfield. Because I'm thinking N'Golo Kante and Enzo is a very nice pivot to have. It's something that could re reciprocate from the time that N'Golo won the Premier League with Leicester City. Because Drinkwater is a very, very B-Tech version of Enzo Fernandez, But he looked amazing next to N'Golo Kante in that scenario. So I just want to see how we can develop. But we're not here for that. We're here to talk about what's going on with Potter and why the hell was Hansi Flick in the executive. Lounge. So if you look at it now, yesterday there was a photo that came out. Hansi Flick next to Daniel Frankenstein or Flackenstein. I don't know how to pronounce his name. That Daniel individual is an executive on the Chelsea board. So whether you like it or not, this man has pull and has sway. He might not make the decisions, but I promise you he has an input and he has the know-how to encourage people to make decisions. Potter's run of form has been horrendous. And a lot of people are looking at the length of the contract to justify why they won't sack him. Why Bowley and Agbali are going to back him. My problem here is, at what point is it time to rip the band-aid off and just try repatch the scar? Try repatch the wound? Because you're spending money to do work in and around it. You're not fixing the managerial issue that we are evidently having at this moment in time. People are going to say, Alex, yesterday, I had a lot of people say, Alex, you're not calling out the obvious issue, the manager. What's there to say about the manager yesterday? Because his in-game management wasn't great. Yes, he had to play Mason Mount and Conor Gallagher because of injuries. But the issue here wasn't that he was bad. I just think Conor and Mason can't perform on the top caliber level in the Premier League. And that's the issue. When they play for a better side and they're expected to do things sharper, they just don't perform. Now, if you look at the statistics, because we're going to look at it from a statistical point of view. Chelsea in their last four games, Fulham 2-1 defeat, 1-0 win against Crystal Palace, Liverpool 0-0, and yesterday Fulham 0-0. All of those games, Chelsea were way above their expected goals and won the games on expected goals. If you don't know what expected goals are, it's there's an algorithm that calculates the percentage and the probability of scoring from every short action that you do. And it gives you a score that, on, like as a rating score, the higher the score, the 
greater chance you have of scoring. So for example, I think a penalty kick is 0.7, so it's like a 70% chance of you scoring a penalty. And Chelsea have been dominating that metric for the last four, four games. And this is a nice change from that bad spell we had in November, October time, where we weren't dominating and we were losing games convincingly and deservedly. So now what the question is, is are we just missing chances and we're just unlucky? Or are we just crap and not very good, so Potter needs to change something? And for me, the reality is, I don't know what we are at the moment. Because I don't think sacking Potter right now is the right decision if we don't have a plan B. We cannot be going after Jose Mourinho's. We cannot be going after the managers that we're being touted with. Because I just don't see them as the long-term solution. I think Tuchel was the long-term guy, but we got rid of him. So now we brought in Potter. Let's just see what's going to happen. Because at the moment, you sack him and you bring in Hansi Flick. Okay, cool, give him the keys. Does he want to join? When the minute you start seeing him sitting next to board members, guys, smell the oil, smell the kitchen, there's a fire going to start somewhere. And if Potter doesn't get ready to put out that fire, he's going to lose his job. And I'm telling you now, it looks like they've already got a replacement. Now the final part of the video. Uh, Chelsea's Champions League squad has got announced. We've got Dortmund coming up on the 15th for the first leg. It is going to be a tough one, guys, because... Under Tuchel, I love the Champions League. I backed us over two legs over anybody. Bring on Real Madrid, I used to say. Now, I am scared of bloody Benfica. I am scared of Benfica if we get them. But in this case, we have got Dortmund. Dortmund are a good side. So Chelsea have announced their squad at this moment in time. And if you look at the squad, um, it's an interesting squad. The three players that made it in, because we signed a lot of players and you had to re-register these players. Number one, Joao Felix, as he should. Number two, Enzo Fernandez. And number three was Mudrik, Mikhailo Mudrik. A lot of uproar came from the fact that Benoit Badia-Shiel was not included in the squad, considering that we've got three clean sheets and him and Thiago are building a nice partnership. I think that was done on purpose because they believe in Koulibaly and the one and only Wesley Fofana. We have got a great cover in that position to suffice with any problems that could arise. The problem was Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang was left out. And this caused a lot of commotion. I think this is the right decision to make. I feel sorry for Aubameyang and I've always felt sorry for Aubameyang because he came to play for Tuchel. He came because he was convinced by Tuchel to come. And Tuchel gets sacked straight away. I think it was after one game Tuchel got sacked. So when you actually break it down and you chisel all the little minor details, the writing was on the wall for Pierre. Like, Pierre knew he was going to leave. Whether he leaves now to the UAE or whether he goes to Turkey because the window's still open, we don't know. But it looks like he's not going to be playing much of a role going to the end of the season from now on. It is frustrating because I don't think Aubameyang ever got a fair crack. But at the same time, I never saw Aubameyang as a long-term solution. Even when we signed him, you guys remember me saying, I don't know what we're doing here because this player shouldn't be a Chelsea player. He just doesn't fit the mould. We already had Romelu Lukaku, who is a penalty box striker. Why are we going and acquire another penalty box striker? It just doesn't make sense. We don't play that way. We have an issue with creativity, not goal scoring. And I genuinely believe that. And a lot of people don't want to agree with that. They say we need a nine. We need a nine. We, we don't need a nine. Because I believe with creativity, there are enough players within our team that can so combine together to get goals. We just need a prolific goal scorer, either from the wide and play Kai Havertz as false nine. And you know what? A lot of you have said to me, I'm very biased when it comes to Kai. And you know what? I am. Because I believe Kai is better than what we're seeing right now. Yesterday was not good from Kai. I rewatched the highlights. I rewatched the game. It was not good. He should have finished one of those shots. But at the same time, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang is not the solution. Fofana potentially could be a nice impact sub for the rest of the season. Just let him develop. He's 20 years old. So, guys, let's just back the team. Try to get behind it. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts. And we'll talk about more information, maybe potentially tomorrow, if more news comes out. But, I'm out. Peace out.